All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's class. Hopefully you have had a chance to get caught up in the YouTube Academy playlist. And if you haven't, it's right there on the home screen. We have so far covered everything from the history of astrology, astronomy. Gordon brought us through the intro to the planets. We got to meet the sun and the moon by themselves with Jamie. And today we are going to be introduced to some moon blends. So lots of courses, lots of classes have been happening. Make sure you're up if you have questions remember you can leave them below the videos and on wednesdays and saturdays myself the teachers the tas were all jumping in there to get your questions answered so lots and lots of good learning and if you haven't had an opportunity just yet to check out the full syllabus of the year our full pathway through you can do that at stormygrace.com and it's also in the description box just below this video to create an easier link for you to access that information okay so to Today, I've got Miss Catherine Goshen and her beautiful astrology ASMR voice that <laughs> we loved from the Eat and Greets. People said you were so soothing. That was yeah. like my favorite. They were like, you guys were so relaxing and informative. So what a good combination. We might have a whole different gig. We could have a whole different job together. Meditation videos. Yes. I think we could really pull it off. So Today, Ms. Catherine is going to bring us this concept of using the sun moon blends with if you work with any of Noel Till's work, you are going to know this like the back of your hand and it is an absolutely beautiful introduction to understanding how the lights in us are being reflected in, and driving our motivations and how we're getting things done. So Catherine, thank you so much for being here and I'm gonna let you take the floor. Thanks Stormy. It's such a pleasure to be here today. If my voice sounds a little deep, um, I just have a small uh, frog in my throat, but I'm so happy to be here teaching this class because in this class, you're going to bring a lot of the things that you've already learned and bring them together. And you're gonna start to think out of the box. You know, you've learned a lot about the planet so far. And now we get to begin to see how they work together. So relax, we have about an hour together. And if you are multitasking, I invite you to sit down, take a break. Astrology always needs to be experienced with more than just our minds. We can't learn it only intellectually. We need to sense it in our bodies. We need to feel it in our feelings. So let's begin. I chose a picture for my opening slide of this beautiful young couple with their eclipse glasses on. And they're taking a selfie after looking at the eclipse together. And why I chose this picture is because as we know, we cannot look at the sun directly. This is literal. And this is very, very deeply symbolic in astrology. It is the moon that is the first planet that distributes the light of our sun. And when we start to study the, how the sun and the moon work together, we begin to see that the rays of the sun are distributed outwards from the moon through all those planets that you've learned about. Because to access the power of the sun directly is something that we are still learning how to do. And studying a sun-moon blend is one way into understanding how your sun wo works because it's the moon that is often deploying this energy of the sun. So just like this young couple, they taking a photograph of themselves, they are seeing themselves behind these glasses in a different way. And this is exactly how we begin to understand ourselves and our charts as we go deeper and deeper into astrology. I often like to think that if you meet someone at a party, you meet their ascendant and then you fall in love, you start to live together 
and you come in close contact with their moon. And only through life experience and through healing the wounds and the emotional uh, challenges to our moon do we learn to fully embody and uh, to shine the light of our sun. So let's dive in and see what we're going to cover today. We'll look at what is the sun moon blend. We'll look at how best to approach it. And we will compare the sun and the moon and see how they function. And some of this Jamie Lee touched on, and I'm going to simplify it and get down to the core so that you have a broad introduction from her. And then today we get something that you can really use if you start to, for example, do charts for friends and family. And we have to touch on the elements because this is a core way into the sun moon blend. We'll also very briefly look at qualities and modes. And if anything is uncertain about this, don't worry. You're going to have lessons in the future on both elements and the qualities. We'll then look at a sun moon blend concept chart which is really important to help us get a very simple and easy way into understanding sun moon blends. And finally, we'll look at the charts of a few celebrities. And I think that's the most important part of this lesson. And when you are studying astrology, especially in the beginning or even at any stage, celebrities charts are so helpful to us because in their essence, they are larger than life. And so often their charts are also larger than life. They seem to illustrate many of the astrological points very dramatically. And this is fantastic when we are learning. There is a website, Astro Data Bank, and you will see that many of the celebrity charts are rated. And if you wish to study them, only choose the AA rated charts, which means that these people have an accurate birth time. And this is really going to help you in your studies. So if you, you know, love a certain type of celebrity, Go in, find their chart, and this is also going to help you to understand your own chart. Right. So the sun moon blend describes how your sun, your core energy, blends and works together with your moon, your emotional side, your instinctual side. It is a modern term to help us delineate natal charts. We can look at it in terms of many, many approaches. And today I'm going to focus on one or two ways, but as you develop, you will bring more and more of the tools in your toolbox into your own understanding of the sun moon blend. So usually we begin with signs, all right? How does an airy sun, all that Aries courage and pioneering spirit work together with the Scorpio moon? All that depth, that love of research, that emotion and that feeling, how are those two elements and energies gonna blend together? So yes, elements is the next way we look at sun, moon, blend. And for me, elements are core, 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 core to your experiential understanding of astrology. And what does that mean? It means that we have to experience astrology and not only study it through books. We have to bring our own life experience to what we're doing. 
Because when you do begin to read charts and to understand it on a deeper level, you cannot learn everything off by heart. You need to feel the energies behind the planets. And so often elements is our way into this sensing or this feeling. Qualities or modes, I'm going to touch on those. If you don't know them already, they're three different states of matter. And we will touch on those in a moment. We could also look at a sun moon blend in terms of the moon's cyclical relationship to the sun. And Robin touched on this in her class and Stormy's also going to do a whole class on how the position of the sun and moon in that cyclical relationship actually affects your life. So if you think about it, if the sun is in Aries and the moon is in Aries, you were born at the new moon or a day or two after the new moon. And that position is going to affect your life. And every single uh, position of the, the sun, there are actually eight uh, positions of the sun moon cycle, which go on to influence the sun moon blend. And I wrote here that eventually you will be able to integrate all that you've learned in this course into expanding your understanding of sun moon blends. And one of those will be aspects, because if a sun and the moon are both in Aries, they are conjunct. And you will be studying aspects later on. So there's so much to look forward to with that. Another one is planetary rulers. You've just finished all the planets, right? So as I speak through these sun moon blends today, start to think about what planet rules that sign. And how will that affect my sun moon blend? So let's take that example we had of the airy sun and the Scorpio moon. That's a lot of Mars. That's going to be a person that is always driven to go on to something new, to meet a challenge because they are strong in Mars energies. So that is another way into these sun moon blends through planetary rulers. And I put there the ascendant because traditional astrologers during the Hellenistic period would have looked at the sun, the moon and the ascendant as a perfect triangle. They would have said that these are the three places of life. And they would have assessed your vitality in terms of those three. So later on, you're going to bring in the ascendant and you're going to see how your special, unique sun moon blend is channeled through your ascendant and out into the world. So let's briefly go through the sun and moon. I know you've touched on this and what I'd like you to focus on now is we want to have language to express our astrology, language that is very simple and clear so that we don't get caught up in too many um, explanations. So today we're going to talk about the sun as our divine fuel, all right, divine, because this is, the sun is the, the giver of all life in our system. And this is the reason that we are alive. And we use this word fuel because it, it's as if it's a fuel running through our veins, running through our life, driving everything that it's that sun that we can't look at directly. So the moon will come along to deploy that fuel for us. 
The moon is the first distributor of the sun's fuel. And when you begin a journey of deepening your wish to understand yourself, a very good place to start is with your moon sign because so often the moon is driving our life and we have to really heal our moon and get to the bottom of our moon before we can actually come in closer contact with our sun. So now we're gonna compare the sun and moon again briefly. And I ask you to recall all you've learned about the sun and moon to date and to try to see how they are working together, how their energies complement and also how different they are from one another. From one another. So the sun is this fundamental energy center. When we think about the energetic body, the sun is resonating just in front of our solar plexus, which is this area in this very center of your body. And when you think about people that are fully empowered and standing in the light of their sun, they are centered and they are have a strong solar plexus, a strong solar energy center. Another way to think about that is if you're very nervous or you've been through challenging times in terms of power relationships with somebody, your solar plexus might do flip-flops. You actually feel that and that's in your energetic center. The moon's energetic center is just in front of the breastbone here. And when we go through challenging times with the moon, we tend to close up, we tend to protect ourselves and we tend to feel pain in this area of our bodies. And when we go through periods in our life where we're able to work through trauma and let go of the past, we feel a huge opening in the center and the heart can open and we can let go of a lot of pain. So we have these two core centers working and they need to work together and circulate that energy. The sun, always a constant at the center while that moon is waxing and waning. All right, and think about that again. It's a literal cycle and it's representing symbolically how our emotions wax and wane. And when the moon is in a challenging position, one can tend to be moody, all right, like the moon, up and down. And what we are aiming for when we are living our charts fully is to come to a place where the light of the sun is always shining on the moon so that whether the moon waxes or wanes, we have a constant in our life, a constant light. We've spoken about the fact of distribution and the lights balance each other. The sun is our divine purpose, its core. Whereas the moon is more organic, it is tying us to this world. And we very much need to honor that organic process of the moon. Um, and this is why our bodies are so responsive to the moon cycle. And if you just take a note in a diary of when the sun is square to your moon, you're going to sense incredible fluctuations. And you'll see, or when the moon is square to your sun, the same thing, the moon is operating on, on us so strongly. And we'll do one more table of this before we move on to the uh, elements. 
We know about the sun as ego identity. We just spoke about the moon as the instincts, the moods. How are those two going to work together and how can they complement each other? Something very important with the sun is that, that it's usually an early model of power. And the moon is our early model of our need for love and it shows past imbalances. And we'll see this in the natal chart, often through contact from the outer planets to our moon. And once again, this is something that we need to work through in our lives in order to open that heart, open that love, and let the sun and the moon shine. Spoke about that and over the years, I've, obser I've ob observed in many clients that it is challenging for them to shine the light of their sun fully until their moon is healed, right? And healing of the moon, it can be a process. It can be something that takes place in a moment, but it is really about the letting go of past traumas, past difficulties, past suffering, and choosing in a moment to turn toward the light of the sun. You know, it's said that the sun is always shining. It's always there. We just have to turn to it in order to feel its healing rays. And a good way, if there are challenges, if you are experiencing emotional challenges in your life, start to observe your reactions and your fears because these are coming from the moon. When, you know, we've said so many times, the moon is the instincts, the moon is the instincts. What does that mean? It means that if someone does something that upsets you, what is your automatic response? This is how you're going to access how the moon is working in your chart. And astrology becomes more and more powerful the more we take what we are learning and we apply it into our own lives and we see, oh yes, I'm reacting from my moon. Like, what does that feel like? And this is how we learn what our moon is uh, here to teach us because every planet in our chart is there for a very special reason. We've come to experience it and we need to experience it. So now we need to look at the elements before we uh, move on. Oh, there are a few other points I want to mention here. And these are also things for you to explore in your own time. But I just want to touch on them because astrology is so fascinating and there's so much. How did you experience your parents' relationship? Right, think about this for a minute. Two people have three children. Each of those children has a different sun moon relationship in their chart. One child was born at the new moon, the other child was born at the full moon, and the third child was born at the gibbous moon, let's say. So each of those children experienced their parents' relationship in a certain different way to one another. And that is shown by the sun moon blend. And I won't say anything more about it today, but I invite you to think about that. Also, a very fascinating uh, point is that many women conceive when the moon is in the same cycle. In other words, the moon is in the same relationship to the sun as 
the relationship in their natal chart. Also something to really think about. And finally, I want to touch on, I'm not sure if you'll be studying vocation, maybe next year in one of the specials, but the moon's needs, which we're going to look at a little bit later in the chart, the moon's needs must be fulfilled in the vocation. Whatever work you're doing, this is one of the most important ways we find out if you are doing what you came here to do. So we look at the moon by sign, we look at it by house, and when we are not fulfilling the needs of our moon, work can feel very dreary or very unfulfilling. All right, so Christopher Renstrom is going to be giving an entire class on elements. So I don't want you to, and on the qualities, I don't want you to feel that you don't have a lot of introduction to the elements, but they are so important in looking at your sun moon blend that I wanted to bring them today. And I do encourage you to write down the next uh, few slides because they are going to help you approach not only your sun moon blend, but in fact, any planet in your chart, as well as the ascendant. Fire. Fire needs to act on the world to make an impression. Earth. Earth needs to establish material security. Feel the difference. Air needs to spread ideas to influence people right? There must be some kind of feedback for air signs. And water needs to establish emotional security. And we know that fire and air are compatible. Think about it. When you have fire and air, the fire can burn, right? And we know that earth and water are compatible elements. The water is nourishing the earth, making the plants grow. So as we go through our day today, through the rest of the week, let's all try to be aware of the elements in our lives and how they are working together. What happens when we put fire and earth together? Does the earth smother the fire? Let's try to observe it. What happens when we put earth and air together? You know, air and water. How do these qualities that are in our literal world also manifest in ourselves? And what happens when we put incompatible elements together? Qualities are different modes or ways of states of matter. And they are cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And cardinal quality means an initiating quality. So any signs, the cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. These are initiating signs that are striving for the next thing. And when you think about the sun moon blend, you also want to think about what qualities, what modes are my sun and moon in? And how does this mean I need to deploy energies in my life? Fixed signs like to keep things as they are. They are cementing things this is we've just entered the fixed period of spring and you'll see over the next few weeks of Taurus the weather is going to be stabilizing mutable signs mutable signs are adaptable 
they like to try this, they like to try that, there's a flow. So maybe mutable moons are able to go with the flow. Think about how the quality of the, uh, the sign, does it go with the planet? Leo, which rules the sun, is a fixed sign. The moon is ruled by cancer. It's a cardinal sign. What happens when we bring in other qualities into those sun-moon blends? Okay, so now we're going to go through the sun-moon blend concept chart. And of course, I'm not going to give you all 144 combinations because there are, in fact, 144 combinations of sun-moon blends. So the chart I'm about to give you is very brief ways of looking at the sun and looking at the moon so that you can then use that chart to make your own blends. It comes from a book called Synthesis and Counseling in Astrology by Noel Till. And the reason I didn't put it on your reading list is that it's currently uh, about $300, which just seems totally ridiculous. It's selling secondhand. It is a very thick book. And hopefully in the future, it's going to be republished. I invite you to write down the sun moon blend concept chart from this class. And that is really all you need to get into sun moon blends for now. And you will be putting the uh, combinations together yourselves in no time at all. So let's begin with Aries. Oh, yes, I did want to mention that in Jamie Lee's class on April 19th, she gave you some amazing slides there with a lot of qualities about the sun, the sun through each of the signs and the moon through each of the signs. Now, today we're narrowing it down, all right? We're keeping it simple and we're trying to get to the essence of what we've learned so far. And if you choose to learn these, you will have a working way into any blend. So that's an invitation. And I'm sure you've realized by now that you need to do some learning off by heart. You have to know your glyphs. If you wanna be serious about astrology, you have to know the order of your signs and you have to start to learn some things so that you can repeat them in your sleep. All right, so here's our first sun moon blend concept chart. We're going to go through all the signs and look at how they express through the sun and how they express through the moon. So, sun in Aries, energy or fuel to lead to exert force. Moon in Aries need to be important to be number one. Same sign, different expression through the sun and the moon. Taurus, sun in Taurus, energy to build and maintain. Moon in Taurus, need to preserve security to keep things as they are or as they are supposed to be. Hard for Taurus moon people to have emotional change and trauma. Sun in Gemini, energy to diversify, to communicate. Moon in Gemini, the need to be bright clever, informed, intense, right? So with the moon in Gemini, we're feeling the energies of the planet Mercury in a different way to when it's expressed through the sun. Sun in Cancer, 
core energy to create security. Moon in Cancer, the need to be emotionally secure, especially in the family, right? We've got a very strong watery feeling here. Sun in Leo, sun in its rulership, energy to be recognized, right? Like the light of the sun, that energy is very powerful in Leo. Moon in Leo, the need to be respected, loved, and honored. All right, and as I'm going through these, you may wish to think about the moon as either that person who has that moon sign, either those energies were met very well when they were small in the very early years, or those energies weren't met at all. And they need to find a way to heal that as their life become, you know, as they move into adulthood. Sun in Virgo, energy to refine and discriminate, right? Again, we've got Mercury now operating in a different form. This, this refining energy that Virgo has, and it's also an earth sign. So we feel that, that stability, it kind of stabilizes Mercury a little bit. Moon in Virgo, the need to be correct, exact, insightful, right? Virgo moons, very fundamental need for them. Sun in Libra, energy to please and gain appreciation. We all have some Libras in our life and we know that energy well. Moon in Libra, the need to be fair, to be attractive, to be appreciated, all right? Was that need met as a child? Perhaps it was met so well and this child grew up in a home where they were always appreciated. Perhaps that, mood, that need was not met at all and they need to work that through because that's why they've incarnated and that's why they have the chart that they do. Sun in Scorpio, energy to control by knowing, to plumb the depths and reach the heights. All right, there's always that real depth to Scorpio placements. Moon in Scorpio, the need to be in control to be regarded as deep, reliable, significant, self-sufficient, right? Different expressions through the sun or the moon. And you can start to blend them in your own chart. Sun in Sagittarius, energy for self-assertion, for what is right. It's always a very broad feeling with Sagittarius because we have Jupiter in the mix. And whenever Jupiter's in the mix, ruling the sun or moon, there's an expansion. These people like to go big. Moon in Sagittarius, the need to have one's opinions respected. All right, and what happens when they're not? And the final three, sun in Capricorn, energy to organize, to strategize, to deploy resources, often for ambition, right? Again, with Capricorn, we feel that earth and we feel the planet Saturn because Saturn is always long-term. How do I strategize for the long-term? Moon and Capricorn need to administrate progress to make things happen. Right, no one better than someone with the moon in Capricorn to get the job done for you. They are fulfilled emotionally 
through doing things in the world, practical earth sign. Sun in Aquarius. Now we get the Saturnian energy expanding outward, this energy to innovate, to intellectualize, to all with others. Whenever you have the sign Aquarius, you're going to see an inclusivity. With the moon in Aquarius, the need to be socially significant or unusual. And you don't have to be unusual. Some very conservative people have the moon in Aquarius, but they are socially significant in the way that they like to be part of the group. They like to influence the group and they are very group conscious. It's not just about me and my family. It's usually broader than that. And finally, a sun in Pisces, energy to feel and understand sacrifice. Right? There's always a, there's a depth to Pisces, slightly different from the Scorpio depth. It's a, it's a sensitivity. And the moon in Pisces is this need to identify with the ideal, to understand impressions, to work with the intangible. Okay, there's often a lot of creativity or a lot of sensitivity here that one needs to learn how to manage in a world that is often not as easy on water signs because of their sensitivity. So now you have core ways of looking at the sun and the moon. And I invite you to think about these and to see if they are relevant in your own chart and in the charts of others. And maybe you'll tweak them a bit according to your liking. But this is really a good psychological way into the chart. So in the time that we have left today, let's take everything we've learned and try to feel the sun moon blend of well-known people. All right. And the way I've done it is I first put the person up and then only afterwards I'll put their sun moon blend up. So if you want to have a notepad and pencil ready, Jot down the element that you are feeling from this person. And then it will be interesting to see how that plays out. So first up is, I've tried to choose people that need no introduction so we can all be on the same page. Madonna, all right, what do you feel? All right, we can straight away see there's some kind of beautiful mane going on there. And we know that she loves to perform and she always has. All right, so what energy? Do you remember we spoke about the fire uh, element of needing to act on the world to make an impression? All right, so you're gonna get it in your performance. You're gonna get a lot of fire. But there's something else to Madonna, right? And I'm sure many of you are going to be surprised by her moon sign. And by the way, she does not have an accurate birth time. So all the charts you find online are not accurate. They are all rectified. She has, yes, that sun in Leo. Listen to me. I'm here. I'm shining. I need, I have a core energy to be recognized. But she has the moon in Virgo. And this is the need to be correct, exact, and insightful. And she certainly has that. And let's just broaden this out a bit because every sun moon blend, we have to think about on its own terms. So we've got a fire sun and an earth moon. Those are incompatible elements, right? They're not really feeding each other. So there's something very split about her, the way she manages her life. And she 
has used this Virgo moon in such a wonderful way to propel her life forward into stardom because she's not let the fire run away with her. That Virgo moon has made sure that every single performance she does, every single time she makes a post is so meticulously organized, correct to the image that she wants to deploy to the public. There's not a single messy hair there that is out of place for her. That is the look she wants to portray. She never wears a necklace or has a ring on or says anything which is contrary to an image that she has carefully prepared in advance. Virgo moons, they like to be prepared. They like to be organized. And just by knowing this, it gives us a whole different, I think, respect and understanding for how the fuel that uh, Leo fuel has been deployed through this very uh, uh, detailed Mercury moon. You know, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is the mind and everything is cleverly done. So you can see how celebrity charts can really help us begin to get a grip on things because especially the moon sign is showing us this, how this uh, fuel of the sun is deployed into the world and what we feel. I mean, with singers, we often feel them. So let's do a few more singers and, and get a feeling for this. All right, Taylor Swift, what are you feeling here? Hot, cold. So Taylor has a sizzle. All right, when we put fire and water together, sizzle, maybe a smolder, we get that kind of sizzling. We get that kind of smoldering. She has this core energy, <clears throat> all right? She's built an empire. Jupiter rules her sun. It's expansive, it's big. She wants to put out there what is her, um, her energy for self-assertion. It's gone really big with her, but her moon is in cancer. She needs to be secure, especially in the family. Now, I ask you to think about how easy is it to be secure when you're on tour from an early age and you've lived your entire life in the spotlight. So the moon is taking that fuel of the fiery sun and it's deploying it out into the world in this very emotional, watery way. She sings about her insecurity. She sings about her love life. She sings about her feelings. All right, we start to see also the magnetism of her performances because the fire and the water are kind of sparking and smoldering and sizzling together. And they are bringing the challenges to her life that she needs. It cannot be easy to have this uh, life on one level for someone that wants to have a family and wants to be secure and wants to have a little nest and feel safe. Really deepens our understanding of a person and sees what they need to work with and to uh, experience. All right, our last uh, performer today um, and then we'll move on to something else, is Miley Cyrus. What do you feel from Miley, who has been through so many transformations in her life, right? All right, there's a similar combination here, fire and water. And when she was young, operating from that sun, that, that core energy for self-assertion, the Sagittarius sun child is generally very happy, very happy-go-lucky, outgoing. And she was that as Hannah Montana. 
And over the years, there was this transformation where as she entered adulthood, this Scorpio moon of hers, this need to be self-sufficient, came full blown and she sexualized her image and she, in an effort almost to cut with her past, to cut with her parents, you know, this uh, controlling uh, energy that she had grown up under her entire life also lived in the spotlight. How does she manage that blend of this uh, watery, deep element with this fiery sun. And it's going to be very interesting to watch her and see what happens right now when she goes through her Saturn return, because there is a lot of lunar healing that needs to take place. And we do feel how this blend has been a challenge in her life and it's something that has she's enabled to make work for her in terms of her career with her profession but on a personal level it is a challenge for her to manage this and I invite you to think of this also in your own time after this class if you have a moon in a sign that is watery and needs to have alone time, and you have a sun in a sign that is very expansive and has this core energy to be out in the world, to be jovial, to be shining, there is a definite friction. And if you don't learn how to manage that as you mature, in other words, how to feed both sides, this is when challenges and difficulties can arise. So we always have to give the moon what it needs and also allow this light of the sun to always shine. And this is the challenge that each of us have in our own lives with our sun moon blend. So let's move on to James Bond. I don't know about you, I've chosen three James Bond. I like to watch these old James Bond movies if any of you can even remember Sean Connery. Um, because, you know, they don't have all this gratuitous violence. Uh, Connery was Bond from 1962 to 67, 71 and 83. He's also played in uh, movies like The Highlander and uh, Hunt for Red October. But those of you who know Sean Connery, what is the element you feel from him? Um, he actually passed away last year. And was he ever a superstar in this way that he was courting media attention, trying to make an impression, and you're just not feeling that, right? So Connery has a double earth sun-moon blend. Sun in Virgo, moon in Virgo. Core energy, core fuel to refine, to discriminate the fine from the coarse. The reigning emotional need, the moon, to be correct, to be exact, to be insightful. And when he plays Bond, you're feeling this. You're feeling this fine sense, this fine taste in everything. Beautiful clothes, beautiful food not just because it's James Bond, but because of this elemental energy that he's giving off. It's not fiery and all over the place. It's not all deep and emotional. It's not intellectual and airy. It's earthy. It's, it's when he was playing Bond, it was pure practical Bond. It was gadgets, gadgets all the way. And one senses the element of earth. You sense the stability in Sean Connery. His whole life was kind of, you know, he had a good marriage. You sense the sun, moon blend. They are the core to life. The next bond I chose was, oops, let's go back, was Roger Moore. He, I feel, a romantic energy from him, 
as well as an intellectual. And we'll see that he has Sun in Libra, Air, with Moon in Gemini. So he has a, two air signs. He has a trine. Very rare, I must say, when I go through a lot of celebrity charts, very rare to see a trine, um, a harmonious, a trine is a harmonious relationship between the sun and moon, usually says that the parents uh, got along quite well. So he has this core energy to please and to gain appreciation with the reigning emotional need to be bright, clever, informed and intense. And when you get this blend, it's really interesting because you've got Venus, the ruler of Libra, working together with Mercury, the ruler of Gemini. And this Venus-Mercury combination, the Venus brings out the romance and the Mercury brings out this more witty side. And you'll see with, with when Moore plays Bond, there's always this, um, this dry wit and this, this romantic energy without being sexual or sensual. It's more, everything is romance with him. And once again, I love to see how, how movie stars are playing out their sun moon blend in the roles that they choose and that are chosen for them. The last Bond I chose is Daniel, Daniel Craig, right? He's been in the, in the last three Bonds. And immediately you feel the shift. As soon as he took over the Bond movies, the character changed completely. All of a sudden, James Bond was going back to his, uh, his roots. And we went into this deep emotional, psychological explanation of why he was uh, the way he was and what happened to his parents and it like went woo, you know complete change of the character and Daniel Craig has that sun in Pisces I mean look at those eyes you just feel <clears throat> that water you feel his fuel to understand sacrifice, to work with it. You, you sensing, you feeling that sensitivity. How is it deployed? Moon in Aries, all right? We've got again that sizzle. He's got this Aries body, uh, perfectly formed, not too tall, not too short, very muscular. Needs to be important, needs to be number one, needs to have this kind of bravado, this action stunts fire those are the way the sun and moon are working together to create something really interesting with the two different elements and as i say just by his elemental balance he actually changed the role of james bond on the screen so much working behind the scenes that we don't even understand about how we are influenced in life. All right, and I've got two more celebrities to finish off with. Totally different choice now because we need to look at some other signs, right? Oprah Winfrey. What are you feeling from Oprah? Anything different? What does she need to do? She loves to act on the world, right? She loves to make an impression, but she also is completely into this sharing, right? Everything is about inclusivity, the whole world, helping people, humanitarian, all right? Aquarius, core energy to innovate, to intellectualize, to all with others. Her core energy is not just, she didn't wanna create something for herself, she has to share it. She wants to make the world a better place, all right? This is her mantra. That airy sun, that airy fuel is channeled through a fiery moon, all right? Air and fire, they're compatible. 
that air is making her fire burn. And you can see when she is speaking from her moon, she needs to have her opinions respected, but her sun is always present. She's not letting that moon run away with her. We feel the fuel of the sun and we feel that expansive Sagittarius moon ruled by Jupiter going out to everyone and creating something that is bigger than herself. And you could go deeper and look at her chart online. She has a fascinating chart. Um, but let's not say any more about her today. And one other person is someone that she collaborates a lot with. And this is Eckhart Tolle. And for those of you who do know him, he has a lot of videos on YouTube trying to bring people into the present moment to help people through awakening to their life purpose. And why do him and Oprah collaborate? What's the gel there? What do you feel from him? You've, again, that Aquarius sun, that wishing to shine out and to, to help everyone. We always are going to get a humanitarian element. And when the Taurus moon comes in, we feel something completely different, all right? We have the air, sun, with this earthy moon. When Tolle is speaking, you can just feel the stability. And always when we have that blend, you're going to have someone that will be more prone to uh, stability than to innovation kind of tips the balance because the moon is very strong in Taurus. Another person who had the sun moon blend was Ronald Reagan. And you felt that with him. He had this uh, wish to innovate, but there was always that very strong conservatism. So we've touched on a lot of different examples with these celebrities. And you'll notice that certain types of professions as well as you go through your own charts attract certain sun moon blend types um, and you'll start to also look at the qualities which we just mentioned today as a way of getting you in look at aquarius is a fixed sign taurus is a fixed sign you're going to feel that fixed energy from these people. They are not da -da 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 Gemini, maybe. They're not airy. They are um, not mutable. They are fixed. All these uh, elements and qualities, they will start to enter into your daily vocabulary. And I invite you to use them in your everyday life. And if you meet someone interesting, ask them their birthday so you can look. They might not know the time and that's okay because most of the time you'll be able to see where their moon is. Sometimes it's challenging if the moon is at late degrees or early degrees, but generally you'll be able to understand their sun moon blend and see how they are living their chart. So that's all I have for you today. I put this picture to finish off with. It's a girl and boy holding hands under the stars. And I wrote here, let's keep our minds open because I have noticed in my practice a lot that people, especially young people, may say that they are never going to date a certain sign because it's just not compatible with their sun sign. Now there is so much more to astrology than meets the eye. When we are connecting with someone, our sun is usually connecting with their moon or their Venus or their sun moon midpoint or their ascendant or other things in their chart. When we get to know these sun moon blends better, we must not use them 
as ways to say to people, I totally get you and therefore I'm going to pigeonhole your behavior from now on. We have to always remain open in astrology because there is so much more going on to a chart, to a person. There's more to life than astrology. So that we don't um, limit ourselves by our sun moon blend, but we rather use it as a stepping stone to understand ourselves better and to go deeper into our charts. And I hope you've enjoyed this class today. I will be giving a few lessons in September. I'm still focusing on what to teach. So uh, for those of you who are interested, you can visit my website on that. And that's all I have for you today.